Proverbs chapter 14, and the, the, the title of this tonight is The Dirty Stall. Um, back in Bible days, people farmed with oxen. How many of you ever seen that happen? Uh, I've actually, I've never plowed with oxen, but I've plowed behind a donkey before. Mm. It's hard work. It's real, and if you don't know what you're doing, it's even harder because you're you're fighting when you ought not to be fighting. You're supposed to let the 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 animal do the work. But there are still lots of people today that that do farming with oxen. That's right. um, you ever heard of the Mennonites? Yeah. Jeanette and I had opportunity to visit a Mennonite farm up in uh, Michigan a couple of years ago. And we actually went to one of the farms and watched them. They use draft horses. They don't use oxen. And uh, draft horses, those really big horses, the back of their horse is over your head. Well, not over John's head, but over my head. I mean, they're huge. Their hooves are like that big around. They're super strong animals. And they use them for pulling their, their equipment through the field. But that's what they do. Um, it was interesting. But... A lot of people still use oxen, um, even in America, but especially in other countries. But here in Proverbs 14, verse 4, Solomon talks about it just a little bit. He said, where no oxen are, the crib or stall is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Let's pray before we continue. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the fact that it is living, it's powerful, and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Lord, I do pray that you would cause your word to sink into our hearts tonight and to cause us to make change where you want us to. Lord, I pray that you would help me to, to say what I should so that I can accurately deliver your message to your people. Lord, I thank you for that, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A single, well-abled man can farm about two acres with a, with a push plow. Anybody ever used a push plow? Anybody still use a push plow? I... Still use a push plow. But I'm not farming two acres. I'm only farming a little section. Probably as big as this room. Maybe not even that. Well it's probably about that big. And it's work. So to farm two acres. This property that the church sits on. Is about two acres. Or is it three? Almost three. Almost three. So it's not quite. That's a lot of property to be pushing a plow through. Isn't it? Yeah. But that same man using an, one ox can farm up to 50 acres. Mm. Wow. So that's, that's 25 times what he could do without the ox. So Solomon was right. Much increase is by the strength of the ox. Yeah. Having an ox... If this could help you, it, it's like having a tractor. Uh, which I've done a lot of farming on a tractor as well. In my field of work, doing tree work, it's like having a bobcat skid steer. Yeah. I've been doing tree work for 27 years, but the first 21 years we didn't have any equipment. We did it all by hand. We cut it up in pieces small enough that we could pick it up and throw it on the trailer by hand. And we would cut trees down that big around. So we'd have to cut the log in half and then cut that piece in half and that piece in half and get it down to a sizable amount where we could load it by hand. And we had to carry it from the backyard around to the front yard in a little cart. <clears throat> so then one day God blessed me with a bobcat. Amen. And buddy, that thing could pick up like 2,000 pounds at one time. Yeah, amen. That was a game changer. Amen. 
Now I could plow 50 acres. <laughs> yeah, true. <Yep. clears throat> I mean, a real game changer. There's a problem with having an ox. They poop. So somebody's got to clean that up. When I was at Camp Tracy as a boy, we had horses and we had several horses. And once or twice a week, we had to clean the stalls. You know what we were cleaning out of the stalls. And we had to carry it out to this big pile away from the barn. And for some reason, we, we had wheelbarrows, but instead of using wheelbarrows, we used five-gallon buckets to make it harder, harder, because we were trying to build muscle. Yeah. You know, that's what teenage boys do, mm-hmm. because they're wanting to look like, like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, it doesn't work. <clears throat> but we would get three buckets full of wet manure in one hand and three buckets in the other hand, and then we would compete to see who could carry them until we just couldn't carry them anymore and they dropped out of our hands. <clears throat> yeah, that wasn't smart, was it? We had a wearable sitting over there all lonesome by itself, didn't doing nothing. But we had to work hard to clean these stalls out. In other words, they were causing a problem. That's what ox do. Oxen. They cause problems. Yeah. What Solomon is saying here in verse 4, he says that where no oxen are, the crib is clean. You know what? If you want a clean stall, sell the ox. Mm. But you're not going to farm 50 acres anymore. Mm. Right. You're going to be reduced back down to two acres mm. maximum. But much increases by the strength of the ox. <clears throat> so what is he saying? This is important. The nugget is this. Learn to appreciate the positive side of the people that God has put in your life. So especially when you're having to deal with a problem that they caused. Yeah, that's good. Several years ago, I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth. I do that once in a while. And I noticed that there was some hair on the counter and some on the floor. And I knew it wasn't mine because my hair wasn't that long. It got me a little aggravated, you know. I thought, well, I got a mess right here. And then all of a sudden I thought, you know what? If Jeanette wasn't here, mm. I wouldn't have that mess. Amen. So I'm thankful for the mess. Amen. Amen. I like to see that. Yeah, amen. It represents something. Yes. <clears throat> I want her here. Yeah. I love her. The little problem is just a little problem. Mm. So I decided to be thankful for the hair on the floor. <clears throat> the things that I love and appreciate about Jeanette far out- outweigh the minuscule aggravations that she might produce. Amen. <clears throat> you know what causes us to focus on the problem more than the blessings of having those people around us? Three things. Pride, selfishness, and a bad memory. Mm. Mm. Solomon says that only by pride, only by pride cometh Contention mm. or arguing. Do you remember the last time you were in an argument? I hope I'm not bringing up some something that happened on the way to church tonight. Maybe I don't, know. or this afternoon. But I'm here to tell you that it happened because of pride. Yeah, true. 
And and if you're saying, yeah, his. Mm. <laughs> did you uh, participate in the argument? Yeah, come on. Because if you did, it happened because of pride. So sometimes pride is what causes us to not be thankful for the blessings, but instead we want to focus on the problem. Yeah. The, the second thing that causes this problem is selfishness. <clears throat> Our selfishness swells up when we don't get what we want or something doesn't go the way we want it to go. Right. Then we complain, mm. argue, we blame. And it causes us to focus on the problem instead of the blessings. Mm. Remember this, every difficult situation that you ever encounter is a tool in God's hand to make you more like Jesus. That's, true. That's so true. So when that happens, don't fight it. Don't fight them. But instead, there should be a question that rings in your head that says, God, what is it that you want me to see here? And what is it that you're trying to change in me? Yeah. Because something is, he's trying to change something. Amen. But, but Brother Bruce, they, you don't know what they did. You don't know what they said. Mm. They, they were wrong. Mm. So were the soldiers that slapped Jesus in the back with that cat of nine tails. Right. But he still said, Father, forgive them. Amen. Mm. <clears throat> Just because people are wrong doesn't mean we have to be wrong towards them. Amen. Mm. <clears throat> Our bad memory is the third reason that we focus on the, the problems instead of the good sides of these people. And the reason I call it the bad memory is because we forget all the problems that we create mm. yeah. that they have to deal with. It's almost like they're the only ones causing a problem. Mm. Why? Because we have a bad memory. Because <laughs> we forgot that one that we caused just yesterday or right. five minutes ago or whenever it was. Right? Right. <clears throat> when you cause a problem that someone else has to deal with how do you want them to respond to you mm, that's good do you want them to blow up and scream and just throw you out and make you feel like, like you're about that big is that what you want them to do no then why is it that that's how we treat them Mm. Right. when they mess up. Right. But they did it on purpose, Brother Bruce. So do you. Mm. Sometimes. Yeah. How do we want them to treat us? What's the golden rule? Doing to others. You have them doing to you. Okay, y'all didn't do that in unison, so we're going to have to start over. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but you're right. It was... Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. So if when I mess up, I want Jeanette to say, it's okay, I understand. It's, it's a small thing, it's not a big deal. Then that's what I need to do when she does something that causes me a problem. Amen, that's good. It's easy for us in our line of work with tree work to tear something up quickly. <laughs> when you're dealing with a tree that weighs 5,000 pounds or 15,000 pounds or a piece of equipment that can pick up a car and flip it over, you can tear something up pretty quickly. Yeah. And, and I'm glad Bubba ain't here tonight because I can tell, tell on him about this, but he tears stuff up sometimes. And he feels bad about it, but it's still, I still have to pay for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still have to go to that customer and explain something. Yeah. Try to make them a little bit happier than they are. 
And he'll come to me and he'll say, I'm sorry, I, I just wasn't paying attention. I didn't see that. I didn't, I'm sorry. Yeah. And at that moment, I want to say, <laughs> <laughs> but instead I tell him, that's all right. We can, we, can, we can fix that. Yeah. It's not a problem. Amen. He says, yeah, but it's going to cost some money to fix that. And I look him straight in the eye and I say, Bubba, you're worth it. Amen. Sometimes he shows up late because he slept in. Again, I'm glad he's not here because I can tell on him. <clears throat> and it aggravates me. But he's worth it. Yeah. Because he Amen. makes up for it when he gets to work. Amen. <laughs> he does. Yes. Much increase is by the strength of the ox. We can choose to get aggravated with those people in our life that we love and care about when they make a mistake and they cause a problem. Or we can choose to forgive. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know what the most recent problem that you had to deal with, with that person in your close proximity, whether it be a family member or somebody at work or a neighbor or I don't know. But we have a choice and the choice is one of two things. We can choose to get mad. We can choose to make, try to make them feel guilty and make them feel that big because of it. But that ain't what's right. That ain't what Jesus would do. No. And that's not what He has commanded us to do. He said to do unto others as you'd have them to do unto you. Yes. You're going to have a dirty stall. Yeah. You're going to have hair on the floor. Mm. You're going to have that scratch on the car. Yeah. And that's okay. Amen. <clears throat> because whoever did it is worth it. Amen. And it's your duty and my duty to make sure that they know that. Mm. Not to make sure that they feel bad, so bad that they'll never do that again. Because that's not going to happen either. Amen, brother. Amen. We're going to have a dirty stall. And that's okay. Love them. Be forgiving towards them. Amen. Let's Amen. pray. Father, I thank you for loving us. Thank you for being so forgiving to us. So long-suffering and patient with us. Lord, we mess up over and over and over. And you just constantly forgive us. And I'm thankful for that. So Lord, I pray that you would help us to be just as forgiving to those that you have put in our life. And I thank you for that. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Turn to 474.